Chapter 24, An Urgent Appeal When Lysias turned on the receiver, a soft melody wafted into the room, soothing us with its harmonious sonority. On the screen, we could see the announcer in his work chamber. In a few moments, he began to speak. This is Station 2 from Moradia. We continue to broadcast our colony's appeal on behalf of peace on earth. We urge all our goodwill co-workers to pool their efforts in the service of preserving the moral balance of the globe. Please help us, all of you who can spare a few hours to cooperate with us in the work areas that connect the dark forces of the umbral to the human mind. After having spread the fiery torches of war in Asia, dark phalanxes of ignorant spirits are now laying siege to the nations of Europe, urging them into the crime of war once again. Our colony and all other colonies dedicated to working for the spiritual cleanliness of the circles nearest the planet denounce the actions of these concentrated powers of evil. And we request all the fraternal cooperation and assistance you can possibly give us. Remember that peace needs workers for its defense. Cooperate with us to the best of your abilities. There is work for everyone, from Earth's fields to our very gates. May the Lord bless us. The voice stopped and we heard the divine music again. The urgent tone of the strange call stirred my innermost fibers. Seeing that I needed help, Lysias explained, We are listening to Moradia, an old service colony closely connected with the lower regions. As you know, it is August 1939. All your personal suffering of late has left you little time to be aware of the grave situation in the world. Let me tell you that the nations of the planet are on the verge of a dreadful war. What do you mean? I was awe-stricken. Wasn't there enough bloodshed in the last great war? Lysia smiled, looking at me in silence with his deep shining eyes, as if lamenting the gravity of the hour humanity was now facing. For the first time, the friendly nurse had no words for me. His silence embarrassed me. I was especially awed by the immensity of the spiritual service offered on the plains of this new life. So were there other colonies of benevolent spirits who were pleading for assistance and cooperation? The announcer's voice had the tone of a true SOS. On the screen, I could see how tired he looked. He displayed deep anxiety in his disquieted eyes. And his language? I distinctly heard him speak in clear and correct Portuguese. I had been under the impression that all spirit colonies communicated through vibrations of thought. So, were there great difficulties in the interchange? Noticing my confusion, Lysias explained, We are a long way from the ideal regions of pure mind. As on earth, there are a few who are in perfect harmony with one another, and they can exchange thoughts without any linguistic barriers. But in general, we cannot dispense with the linguistic form, in the broad sense of the expression. Our field of battle is immeasurable. Earth humanity is made up of millions of people and is united with the invisible humanity of the planet, which numbers in the billions. Thus, it is impossible to suddenly reach the perfected zones right after the death of the physical body. Our national and linguistic heritage still remains with us here as we are restricted by psychic limitations. In the highly diverse sectors of our spiritual activity, there are a great number of spirits who are free from all limitations, but we must bear in mind that the rule is that we must endure such limitations. Nothing escapes the principle of sequence, which is an imperative of the laws of evolution. Meanwhile, the music had stopped, and the speaker returned. This is Station 2 from Moradia. We continue to broadcast the appeal of our colony on behalf of peace on the earth. A heavy fog is gathering over the skies of Europe. Forces of darkness from the umbral are spreading in all directions, answering the call of the base tendencies of humankind. 
There are many in political office who are devoted benefactors and who are struggling and making great sacrifices on behalf of international harmony. Some governments, however, are excessively centralized, offering little potential for spiritual collaboration. These countries lack governmental bodies that would offer intelligent and dispassionate counsel, and are thus moving towards a war of great proportions. O oh, beloved brothers and sisters of the higher colonies, let us help preserve human peace. Let us defend the centuries of experience of the many homelands of Western civilizations. May the Lord bless us. The announcer went silent again, and the soft melodies returned. Lysias remained silent, and I didn't dare interrupt. After about five minutes of relaxing harmony, the same voice was heard again. This is Station 2 from Moradia. We continue to broadcast the appeal of our colony on behalf of peace on the earth. Brothers and sisters, let us invoke the help of the powerful fraternities of light, which must preside over the destinies of the Americas. Help us preserve the millinery treasures of terrestrial evolution. Let us march forth to aid defenseless groups. Let us sustain the maternal hearts, suffocating in anguish. All our forces are concentrating on the tremendous duel against the legions of ignorance. Help us in any way you can. We are the invisible part of earthly humanity, and many of us will soon return to the fluids of the flesh to expiate past errors. Incarnate humanity is also our family. Let us all unite in one single vibration. Let us turn the light against the attack of darkness. Let us use the resistance of the good in the war with evil. Rivers of blood and tears are threatening the fields of the European communities. Let us proclaim the need for constructive labor and expand our faith. May the Lord bless us. After that speech, Lysias turned off the receiver. And I saw him discreetly dry a few tears that his eyes had not been able to hold back. With an expressive gesture, he spoke with great emotion. What self-denying workers our brothers and sisters of Moradia are. Nevertheless, he added sadly after a short pause, humankind will pay a terrible tribute of suffering in the days ahead. But there is no possibility of preventing this tremendous catastrophe, I asked, also moved. Unfortunately, replied Lysias in a grave and pained tone of voice, the general state of affairs is exceedingly critical. In answer to the appeals of Moradia and other centers working in the neighborhood of the Umbral, we have held numerous assemblies here, and the Ministry of Divine Union has already explained that incarnate humankind as a collective whole is like an insatiable person who has overeaten at a public banquet. The organic crisis that follows is inevitable. Many nations have nourished themselves on criminal pride and vanity. They have been fiercely self-centered. Now they are experiencing the urgent need to expel these lethal poisons. Showing that he intended not to pursue the bitter subject any further, Lysias invited me to retire. <laughs>